Welcome to yet another interesting episode of The Startup. In this episode, I'm joined by George Gedenji. George Gedenji is the director and proprietor of George's Wardrobe. He started his business with a capital of 500, 600, 700, 800, 900 Kenyan shillings to build an empire that has now two outlets. After the break, his inspiring story. Don't go away. Welcome back. I'm now joined by George Gedenji of George's Wardrobe. Karibu sana, George. Thank you. Thank yes, you yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Imagine now, this is 900 Kenyan shillings. Yes. Start a business. In How fact, did you start with that capital? In fact, eh? it, I had 700 shillings. Then, then my brother gave me 200 shillings. Wow. Because I was working for my brother. So now the capital came to 900 shillings. And I went to Gikomba Market, eh? and bought bodysuits. Bodysuits? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, we would buy bodysuits for 50 shillings. You know the bodysuit, the combination, yes. the one that has panties and a top at the same yes. time. Yes, yes. We would buy one for 50 shillings and sell them for 150. Wow. So here, right so here. It is a profit, you made a profit from 50 shillings to 100. To 150. Of, which is now almost 150% profit. Actually, I think it's 300%. 300%, in fact, yes. 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 Uh -huh. yes. So, 300%. Uh, and the first day I went with uh, now 900 shillings. My 700 plus, plus 200 demand. from my brother. So, a total of 900 shillings. And I bought bodysuits. And uh, with 900, so the next day I had about 2,500. Because I had to eat and transport and so on and so forth. So, 2,500, I bought a, more bodysuits and a few dresses. And, and that's how it started. No. First of all, the market research. How did you do the market research to understand mm -hmm. that body suits mm -hmm. will sell more than probably men's trousers? Okay, well, I, I guess I was lucky eh? because I was working for my brother at the time. Eh? Uh, my brother had a second-hand kibanda in Westlands. Eh? So we would uh, go open the shop for him, uh, make sales for him. So I was in the market, so to speak, eh? and I was talking to the client. So I knew exactly what would move faster than what. Wow. Yes. And wow. at the time, bodysuits were in very high demand. And uh, so, yeah, that's why I went for bodysuits fast. Judges. Yes. Okay, let me call you because we usually call you judges. Yes. Now, I, this is the advice that I'm getting from this conversation as fast. Mm -hmm. Probably wherever I am working currently, mm -hmm. I can use if I'm still employed, mm -hmm. that to be an experience to do my market research. That is what you can advise. Yes. And you know, inadvertently, you're doing market research. Yes. Whether you know it or whether it's what you know or not, you do know what is happening in your market, in your job. You know what is lucrative and what isn't in whatever you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, how did the business grow from there? Uh, from there, from the 2000 now, uh, from the 2500, yes, yes. I went, bought a few dresses, bought more bodysuits, and of course, you see, you multiply times three. And when the money or when the stock is little, you usually move it quite fast. Eh? Of course, when you build, uh, uh, you have a lot of stock, you build a lot of stock, things move a bit slower. But uh, at first, things were moving really fast. So sometimes I would go to the market more than once a day. I would go very early in the morning and maybe in the afternoon. Yes, so I was able to multiply my money, you know, twice in one day. Did you change the products? Um, the products were still the bodysuits. Well, there were bodysuits, there were dresses, skirts, trousers, shirts, blouses, you name it. Are you hawking or you are selling in your brother's premises? Uh, at, that particular time? at first, I was selling in my brother's premises. Then eventually, I came to Hallingham and opened a kibanda right out there. Yes, I had a kibanda outside by the bus stop. Wow. Yes. Wow. yes. Now, transiting from, entrepreneur, from employment to entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. how was the experience? You know, I have to say this. Eh? The experience was amazing because when you're working with someone, they call the shots. When you're working for someone, they call the shots. They make the decisions. Uh, of course, they make decisions based on their own experience. And so it may be hard to convince them otherwise. 
but I had my own ideas which I had brought up to my brother and realized the only way to achieve uh, these ideas is to implement them myself. So I was implementing what I thought was best at the time. Yes. Wow. Yes. And that is how now you moved out slowly by slowly. slowly, by slowly. This is so personal. Yes. You are working for your brother yes. in this almost the same field. In the same field. Yes. How did he react when you moved out? He, he was, was quite supportive actually. Yes. Wow. Yes. Because wow. <laughs> I suppose I was getting off his back. Eh? Yes. You know now when you are working for your brother, you are his for your brother, you are his burden. Yes. So when you venture on your own, he was quite supportive. Hence, the 200 shilling loan. Loan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But that story reminds me of Adidas and Puma, the two brothers, yeah. but they were so, so, so hard hitting to, to one another. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. now you, you took the business to the next level. Yes. You added the products yes. and everything. Yes. What are some of the lessons that you learned at the early stages of your business? Uh, at, at the very early stages, and I think even eventually, one of the things that you have to be is consistent. You have to be consistent and very disciplined with your money. You see here you are earning uh, 2,500 shillings, 5,000 shillings, and if you by mistake go and drink it, you will drink all your capital or you eat all your capital. So you have to be really disciplined and you have to have your eyes on the go. So yeah, I, I, that's one of the things, discipline with money and consistency. Because one day you can't have a nice bodysuit, then tomorrow when the client brings a friend, you don't have something nice. So you have to be consistent, consistent. And, and very disciplined. And then you have to keep plowing the money back into the business. Eh? And the, the other thing is the first question you asked. Eh? You realize you have knowledge of a business whether you know it or not. So the best way is usually to invest in a business that you understand, that you are aware of. This is what I think. Because people get money and you start investing in something that you've never even, you know, seen. And that can be very tricky. So you advise, first of all, yeah. invest in a business that you, you know. that you already know. Yes. Wow, yes. wow. Some of the challenges. Yes. <clears throat> When I was starting or even now? Even when, when you are starting. We are still in the early stages. Early stages. Yes. Uh, capital for starters. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that you see, if I go to the market, there is nobody to push my staff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, resources, those resources, I guess. The human capital. The, the human, human, human capital. capital. Somebody, somebody to live in the, in the store. In the store, yes. in, in the kibanda, 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 while I'm in the market. market. Yes. The city council. <laughs> in fact, I was coming. The process of registering now to judges one yes, drop. Yes. Uh -huh. for, for starters, you know, when you are on the road, there is no license. We used to get our license for hawking, but it wasn't a guarantee. You would get arre arrested. Uh, hence, the decision to move indoors eventually. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. From a hawker. Uh -huh to where you are. Yes. What message can you tell the people who are still hooking outside there? That anyone can, can uh, build a business from bottom up. Anyone can do it, yes. And it's and, very possible. And by the way, one of the problems that uh, most people who are hooking on the road have eh, is they don't take their business as a business. It's, some, it's just something they are doing, waiting for, for the next big thing they don't realize the next big thing is right there is what they are doing yes, yes. so yes. you have to own what you have currently yes. there's a lot of passion yes and nurture it to grow oh yeah passion passion yes wow. yes wow. if you are disciplined if you are passionate about something you will take it to the next level wow yes now let's talk about george's wardrobe currently mm. what products do you have we do ladies things eh? mostly dresses we have shoes because I realized uh, if you are doing dresses and you don't have the right shoes, they don't come out well. We do dresses, shoes, we do shirts, uh, we do trousers, we do blouses, but we are mostly known for our dresses. Yes. yes. Why did you decide now to probably fend for the ladies? You have to forgive me because uh, you are a guy and so am I, but I think guys are, are a bit boring when it comes to fashion. 
<laughs> and uh, we don't have variety. The best we can do is wear a trouser or shorts. The ladies have trousers, they have tights, they have pedal pushers, they have uh, skirts, they have dresses, they have shorts, they have hot pants, you name it. The ladies have so much variety, you, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. And even in their shoes, they have the flats, the boots, the, heels, the straps, boots, the heels. Strappy, uh, you, yeah. Well, for men, sorry to say, just sneakers and the moccasins. But the ladies have boots, they have ankle boots, they have heels, they have flats, you name it. They have so much variety. I think the ladies' apparels, are, uh, it's quite a wide variety. It's quite a field, yes. And currently, how many shops do you have? We, we have two. two. But we are working on a third one. The third one. Yes. And what can you say has progressed your business? Uh, you know, you mentioned something I had forgotten, which is passion. I am passionate about my business. I make it my, my business to be interested in what the ladies want, what is in fashion. But most of all, and, and this is something else I had forgotten, you have to provide quality. Because people come back for quality. You know, if you buy something, if you buy a shirt, a nice shirt, eh, and you go last a year, two years with it, you will come back with that shirt, okay? You will come back to the shop for that shirt. If you buy a nice pair of shoes, you will come back to that shop for a nice pair of shoes. You will tell a friend, all right? But if you don't provide quality, business is doomed. So yes, quality, passion, discipline, and consistency. Uh, th there is also customer service. Customer is king, or, or queen if you want, eh? yes. <laughs> because we deal with the ladies. With eh? the ladies. You know, there are so many shops, there is so much competition. Why should the customer come back? You need to give the customer great service, amazing service. For instance, you will see a customer may come at about 12, 12.30, or they've skipped their lunch break to come and do shopping. shopping. So what do you do? We sometimes keep bananas, we get juice for them, or if we had made a lot of lunch, with, we share with the clients. So I believe in being nice to the customers, in giving customers a great service. Yes. Well, do you face any competition in the business? Oh, we have a lot of competition. There are so many shops that are doing the same thing that we are doing. Eh? But again, you have to try and uh, up your game. You have to bring amazing quality. Quality-wise, there are not very many people with the same quality that we have. Uh, we also try to give the customer as good a service as we can, eh? so that we try and be you know, above our competition. But yes, there is there's competition. Wow. Yes. wow. Yes. Somebody watching the startup currently, mm -hmm. probably they are still in employment. Mm -hmm and they want to transit now to entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. what advice will you give them, since you experienced the same? Yes. Mm. I think doing your own thing is the way to go. Uh, it's the way to go. But uh, you know, most people think you will get 10 million shillings, f 5 million shillings to start a business. You start a business with the little resources that you have. I'm sure you know about this. You start a business with the small resources that you have and build, try and make it big. Along the way, you might even find this is not your thing and you want to move on to something else. But imagine if you had invested five, ten million, borrowed from the bank even, and then it goes down the drain. So it's better to start from bottom down, then maybe you can invest bigger resources when the business is a bit big and you understand the dynamics of the of the business. My last question, George. What is the future plan of George's wardrobe? Where do you see it in the next one year, two years? The next one year, two years, maybe we will open another shop or two. Uh, but the future of George's wardrobe is we, we want to grow the business. Everybody wants to start a business that will live beyond them. So I would, uh, in the next five, ten years, we want to really expand the business, even get into shopping malls. Wow. Yes. All the best. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, much. thank you. Thank you. I've really learned a lot. <laughs> no, I have learned a lot. In, In fact, fact, for me to, to propel, propel my business, business yes. I need to culture my vision. Yes.
have passion, passion for yeah. that particular vision or idea, business idea that you have. After the break, how they were started, then later on, a business expert. Don't go away.